NASA, despite their grandeur of pushing the field of science beyond where it is today and the ways they captivate the minds of the public, NASA is always at the mercy of Congress and the public. So when the Challenger Space Shuttle disaster occurred, NASA had to embark on a mission to redeem themselves. This would change the purpose of the Hubble Space Telescope and lead NASA through tragedies that threatened their credibility. But in the process, NASA triumphantly gained a tool to change and inspire the public around the world. In the 1980s, following the triumphs of the Apollo era, the public and the United States government had their confidence in NASA shaken by various tragedies. In response, NASA sought to spark new inspiration by launching the Hubble Space Telescope in 1990. Initial tragedies due to distortions in the telescope's lens heightened NASA's already challenged public relations, but repairs to the Hubble restored the public's awe of space and provided NASA the opportunity to launch into a new era of inspiration. Our Window on the Universe The Mission to Redeem NASA A Missed Tragedy By the end of the successful Apollo program, NASA's budget had been cut by nearly $20 billion. Meanwhile, 66% of the American people felt that the U.S. spent too much on the space program, further restricting the budget. Despite the tight budget, NASA had the new space shuttles in development. The resources taken by them increased the constraints on the projects that went through NASA, severely limiting NASA's ability to captivate the public and government during this time. One of the few projects selected for development was a large space telescope. This happened through the scientific community's support for and calculations that a telescope in space would outperform the best land observatories. As a consequence, the telescope had the following statement attached in the budget. The Large Space Telescope is one of the more important programs likely to be requested by the NASA Office of Space Science in the remainder of this decade. It is essential that costs be minimized to ensure that a vigorous balanced space science program can be maintained. In May 1984, the Subcommittee on Space Science and Applications held a hearing to discuss the Hubble Space Telescope's ongoing development. The chairman of the subcommittee opened the meeting by saying, Since the program first began nearly eight years ago, the subcommittee has supported the Space Telescope despite its large cost overruns, schedule slips, and management problems. Unfortunately, the project continued to have issues. Charlie Pellerin, a former director of astrophysics at NASA, explains. And then in 1982, it overran by an additional $1 billion, got my boss fired. I became director then when he got fired, and I had to go back to the Congress three more times to get approximately $1 billion three more times. In spite of numerous internal difficulties, the Hubble Space Telescope was scheduled to launch in August 1986 on the Space Shuttle Atlantis. But tragedy struck on January 28, 1986, when the Challenger Space Shuttle tore apart, sending NASA into a state of shock. The New York Times reported to the American people. Now, suddenly, after an investment of $30 billion and 14 years, and the reverberating shock of failure, we are left full of doubts not only about the shuttles and NASA's fabled competence, but about the very fundamentals of our national space policy. The pause on the shuttle program delayed the launch of the Hubble Space Telescope until April 24th, 1990, when the Discovery Space Shuttle would take it into orbit. Challenger redefined the purpose of the Hubble Space Telescope. As Charlie Pellerin explains, NASA's management had a new mission for the telescope. For, for them, it wasn't about science, it was about repairing NASA's image after the Challenger failure. So Hubble was going to be the proof that NASA knew what it was doing and, and, and recovered from Challenger. The Hubble's new purpose led public relations at NASA to promise the public that the clarity of the images would be more than pristine. And liftoff of the Space Shuttle Discovery with the Hubble Space Telescope, our window on the universe. A month after the launch of the telescope, a public affairs officer invited the press to see the telescope's first images. As a consequence, the media tragically saw the telescope's unfocused images and were utterly not impressed. 
NASA attempted to assure the media that the images would get better, but by the next week, NASA reported that scientists had discovered the Hubble Space Telescope had a spherical abrasion. As a consequence, the Hubble Space Telescope not only failed to redeem NASA after the Challenger, but had also gone billions of dollars over budget, only to meet a tragic fate of failure. I mean, it was so bad that I didn't read, I didn't look at news at all. I didn't read newspapers. I couldn't take it. I didn't look at late night television. This pressure motivated NASA to not support fixing the telescope because of the extreme costs it might take. I uh, met with the head of NASA's appropriations, uh, Congresswoman Barb Mikulski, and she uh, spit on me and screamed at me and put her finger in my chest and said, there'll never be an appropriated dollar to fix this telescope. And the administrator of NASA was with me, Dick Truly, he said, did you hear the, the congresswoman? I said, yes, sir, I did. So I went back to NASA, sat in my office for about an hour and decided to proceed anyway. So I, against her orders and the administrator's orders, I secretly put together a budget of $60 million and began secretly figuring out how to fix the telescope with my friends that knew how to do this. Six weeks after Charlie Pellerin assembled his technical team to work on a solution for the Hubble Space Telescope against orders, they triumphantly went public about the solution, receiving nothing more than praise. Finally, NASA was on its way to triumphantly redeem itself. A month before the first surfacing mission of the Hubble Space Telescope, the Subcommittee on Space held a meeting to review the upcoming launch and the tragedy of what got them there. Happy to have you here, and uh, uh, today, of course, the subcommittee is going to examine uh, the status of the Hubble Space Telescope, a project uh, that's, that became a, a symbol, I'd say, of, uh, of a troubled space program when it was found to have a flawed mirror shortly after its launch. While the scientific uh, yield from Hubble has been impressive, in spite of its flawed mirror, the American taxpayer, I think, deserves to know what happened and, more importantly, uh, how we keep it from happening again and how we reacted. Under management troubles and fudge reports, the telescope had been tragically launched with a flaw that could have easily been discovered. While this was a tragic discovery, NASA was getting ready to overcome the public's mockery with the first surfacing mission of the Hubble Space Telescope. Nonetheless, there was widespread speculation that the mission would fail. In fact, one person even wrote a book uh, about how, how it failed because they were so, so sure it was going to fail. They wrote a book about the failure and got it ready to make money on it. So when it, when it succeeded, it, their book was worthless. The triumphant surfacing mission performed by the Endeavour Space Shuttle on the Hubble Space Telescope became an icon of a new NASA while also allowing the telescope to take quality pictures. And we have liftoff, liftoff of the Space Shuttle Endeavour on an ambitious mission to service the Hubble Space Telescope. Since the Hubble Space Telescope was launched in 1990, the telescope has changed both the field of science and the public's perception around NASA and space. Within the field of astronomy, more than 15,000 scientific papers have been written using the telescope's data, and at NASA, the official Hubble Space Telescope's website held 10% of NASA's web traffic. Triumphantly, the attention the Hubble Space Telescope has received from the public has not only allowed NASA to keep a high approval rating, but has taught NASA how to keep the public engaged. NASA education and public outreach programs are arguably the most inspirational and successful infusion of science into the public consciousness. In addition, the media on the tragedy of the Hubble Space Telescope created the stage for the telescope to have more lasting triumphs on the culture, society, and the world's interest in space than the telescope would have had if things had went to plan. This had made the return on investment from the Hubble Space Telescope in both the field of science and public relations greater than all of NASA's major past projects. As a consequence, the telescope keeps triumphantly pushing the field in unique technology set and awe-inspiring images of the universe. Some of today's triumphs, from the revolutionary spectrographs of the James Webb Telescope, to the new images of the black holes, and even the ability to fight breast cancer, owe their existence to developments made in NASA's rocky road to redeem themselves 
with the Hubble Space Telescope.